Namaste. Welcome back to the show. Rebel Buddha here today. Our our artistic guest is Alden. Good morning. Alden Marin. Welcome. Sometimes it's pronounced Marin, but it's actually Marin. Okay. Alden Marin. If you can see some of his arts in the background, you might have seen his art maybe in Sun Life or around Malibu. This is a super eccentric surfer dude that I'm happy to interview and he's really cool. So let's hear Thanks, your Zach. story. Yeah, well, around here we have uh, hundreds and hundreds of pieces. This is just a small cross section of my art. Uh, here's some, some song lyrics. We also write songs, and that's another story. But this is like my pet squirrel, for instance. This is an abstraction of my pet squirrel. Uh, abstract squirrel eating almonds. So outside on the deck, you see, you'll see you see squirrels running by. Because uh, this is just we're like living in a forest here. See the pine trees out here, Zach? Uh -huh. Pine trees, and we have eucalyptus. And Where are we? Uh, this is Palisades Haverford Avenue out on the bluffs. Bluffs are about a half a mile that way. So I just paint the things I see. These are actually Carlos Almaraz paintings back here. This was a, an idol of mine who's a Hispanic painter, a Chicano painter who died in 1989. He was like a brother to me. They're and originals. These are original Carlos Almaraz. You know, have you heard of him? No. Phenomenal painter. He was an idol for me in his Latino use of color, unabashed use of color. And you can see I've borrowed some of his colors in my, my work. They say that the Latin palette is very hot, oranges, greens, purples, bright greens you know, blues, pinks, and things like that. Very, very unrestrained. Very palette. alive. Yeah. And so what I do is uh, around here you see lots and lots of this kind of thing. I'm also into, as I pointed out earlier, Zach, ob objects or what they call objet d'art. Rocks that you find on the beach. Is that French? Sticks. Objet d'art. Objet d'art means an object of art or okay. art object. So yeah, bring an example it over. of that would be this whole pile of rocks here that I collect. Are, uh, yeah, show them. They can't see. This is so. whoops, what you put, uh, local. This is an artifact called a pestle that the Chumash used. Whoa, that's to, real. To grind, it's real. You know what it yeah. also looks like is a Shiva lingam in Hinduism. Well, I have some of those over here from uh, India. These are this is this is a, a mono that I've collected in some of the endangered sites in Malibu where their bulldozers are are hacking these up. And I go, I know where the Chumash and the Indians lived thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. This isn't about archaeology, by the way. This is just about. What I do is... Well, look, I, that one has a line in it. This is actually from the Midwest. This is a tomahawk head. That's like a really kind of dangerous thing. So that's thing. what they would use on the stick? They would tie that on the end of a stick and clonk people on the head, ride by on a horse. And if you got hit in the head with that, you would survive. You're dead. Yeah. Because the force dead. of the centrifugal force coming by. Oh, my God. Uh, this was found at Paradise Cove. So this Cove. probably killed people before. I don't know. I don't believe in ghosts or anything, but you know, it could be imbued with bad energy. This is what's called a mono. A mono means Chill. hand, Chill. hand stone. This is a handstone I found up above Paradise Cove when my friend Jack, um, Jack, what's his last name? Um, he's a surfer guy. And he's got a big home, and every so often they plow the field, and he goes, come on over, we're plowing. And you find these. Check it out. What did they, so this was a, on the end of a plow. A handstone. No, it was a handstone. So this is Mono. what they used to plow. They used to have a big rock, a matate, which is an, a matate is a big round. I have one over here. I might as well show, yeah, the, show the people. A matate is an ancient grinding rock. This was found in a field right below Pepperdine that was also being plowed for development. This is a, a ancient matate, so which is a, a river stone or a beach stone found and, and carved in an ergonomically round shape and then pecked with a chert or obsidian or um, uh, volcanic igneous rock. They would peck it so they could then take their mono, which is this beautiful cake-shaped rock, and they would grind their seeds, tubers, nuts, and acorns and pound it into a cake, rinse it with water to leach the tannins, and then cook these cakes on open fires. This is like 5,000 years ago in Malibu. This is how people lived. Wow. So these inspire my paintings because these have this sort of like beautiful shape. And they're just, look at them. They look like art. And so part of what goes on around here in my world is collecting. And collecting is both good and bad because... When you have a house full of stuff, like look at all those rocks there. Mm -hmm. Those are all random rocks collected from beaches. And like, you know, when you take off on a wave and you surf in and all of a sudden you're like feeling all grateful that you took a wave and you have all that energy. And you look at the beach and there's like a perfect rock looking at you. And there's like that moment of connection with God and with nature. And a lot of these were picked up in, in, in special moments of connectivity with nature, with God, with the artistic muses. And what I do with these rocks is I then turn and paint faces on them and birds here's a, a rock lady that i painted you can see that that's a lady this is a, a real favorite because this rock just kind of inherently looked like a bird mm -hmm. and i painted two birds on it looks there like a pokemon 
Yeah, a little bit. Um, Pokemon Rock. And so normally what I do is I um, put these at Sun Life. I have my art at all the yeah. Sun Lifes you might have seen up at Point so Doom. So Khalil's cool with that? Khalil lets me put them up on the shelves, and we sell them for $20 for the tip jar. Oh, so really? they sell like a couple a day, and the no kids way. all keep the money. Yeah, Taylor's got them up at Point Doom. They so have them just hook up the kids. The kids all get the money. I get the exposure. He has all those up for shelf. I've been in their den since day yeah. one. I have whole shelves of my stuff, and it's like, Khalil, can't you sell towels or you know, bathing suits or something here, or organic food, you could make money here. He's like, no, I like art in here. Like, you got to hand it to Khalil. He's got a real vision there. Yeah. Not only nutritious food, but a vision of a nutritious and healthy lifestyle. He takes my yoga class. Oh, at, does he? At Mountain up top? yoga sometimes. Oh, I got to come take one, man. I'm moving up guest. there. I want to, thanks. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of what I do is all this artwork, all these boxes of art, and I want the people to see... Um, Show some of your bigger paintings. I want, I want your viewers to see... Um, Kind of like my MO here with my, my painting. When I, when I paint, and I'm already working on one right now for my friend, but what I do is, Zach, I put them in these boxes. And so when I paint a piece like an abstract flower or whatever that says, a small tree that really only existed right here, right here, right now. Here's my, one of my dot paintings. Whoa. And again, if you see anything here you like, you can take it. Wow, If you okay. see a painting you like, you can just take it. Because my feeling is that these I like this one. You can take that. Really? My feeling is that they need to be shared. Um, and they're all on harder, they're all, harder they're, pieces they're, of wood. They're, hard, they're, they're all on matte paper. I get these from my framer. Okay, for free I have or you framer. buy them? Well, I trade them wine and I bring okay. them a lot of business. You know? Wow. Self-portrait on Christmas as art. I See, I'm it. seeing, I'm viewing myself as art here. But this is how I do it, is I just, one after the other, I have over 10,000 originals in the house here. Jesus. And as I was explaining to you, if you're blessed by the gods and, and creative, and you are able to do the work that you do, which, you know, yoga is kind of like that. You know, yoga brings out the energy and it brings out the alignment. I'm not a yoga person, mm -hmm. but I hike and I do, you know, surfing. Well, yoga and, doesn't have to be just postures. Yeah, I mean, I see how, how you get into some of the down dog and ashtanga and, and sun salutations. And, and I've done some, so I know it and I respect it. Mm -hmm. But I'm really too lazy. This is going to come as an irony. I'm too lazy to do yoga. You know, well, yoga's for everyone except lazy people. Yeah, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. But I do want to take your class because I love what you do. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of, I'm always clicking like on your art. Oh, and I see you. your, your positions you're in with all these different people. And it's like, God, that guy's really energetic. He kind of reminds me of me. You, know? uh, you remind like a little me of brother, myself. You know? I'm like, dude, this guy has all these paintings. I'm like, this is like my house. Well, yeah. So the paintings to me, um, I learned from a friend of mine that... Um, like I told you, I'm sober, and I love going to meetings now and then, and I've, uh -huh. I've been to thousands of meetings. How long have you been sober? 22 years, uh, 10 months, and 15 days. Wow. Almost 23 years. If I get to December 1st, God willing, I'll have 23 years sober. Wh why did you become sober? Oh, I was a drunk. I was a daily wine drinker. Okay. And I sell wine. I'm a wine broker. As I was mentioning, behind you here, I have the labels that I create for people. These are my own labels. I'll, we'll talk about this for a second. What's your wine company called? Uh, just me, Alden Marin. Okay. But the wines that I do for people are based on my art. Oh, that was This is cool. one called Stick Man. I love this one. This um, if you fun. look at that, um, Stick Man shows like stick paintings, almost like, you know, yeah. people would be critical and go, oh, you just do like stick, stick, you know, figures. You're not really a, an artist, are you? I go, I don't know what I am. I mean, I'm a human being that likes to use color. And, and so draw this, things. this here, I got away with murder because Mike Roberts' dog is on here. Uh, and there's a guy with like a phallic thing going on, uh -huh. and and that was passed by the by the by the by the California um, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau. You have to submit your labels, and they didn't really look close because there are some vulgarities in there mm -hmm. that are kind of hidden. So anyway, I do these labels. This one's called. This one's one of the ones I'm most proud of, called the Human Condition. The Human Condition, um, in French, Sartre and Camus, the existentialists talk about la condition humaine, which is the human condition that we all face every day. Romance, finance, spirituality, uh, love, death, the big issues, taxes. You know, that's the human condition. This one's called the Red Wine Beast. And you see, I tore the top off a wine box and it turned into an animal that I painted in there. And then I, I took my it. fingers in paint and, I, and it, if you put your fingers together, you have a paw. Oh. See, humans have a hand. Did you know that the hand actually evolved from the fin? The fin of an animal, amphib we are amphibians, but before we were amphibians, we were in the ocean. If you look at the hand, it looks, I learned this in college. If you look at the hand, it's good for paddling, right? right? Yeah, if you keep it together. 
Or you, you know, get your arm in. You could pedal, but the whole that, that was originally a fin, if you look at it. And then when we crawled on land over the thousands and millions of years, it turned into a, a hand. But um, what was my point? Hey, that's a nice piece you got there, Thanks, dude. Thanks, man. I'm really did excited I, did I, to put I, this I did on my wall. Um, so I do wine labels. They're inspired by rocks. They're inspired by dots. They're inspired by color. You look at, you could, if you and I just sat here mm -hmm. in silence, as you know, I'm a very talkative person, especially when I drink tea. So am I. Very talkative. That's why I do a podcast. And it's really cool. I'm really grateful to be on here. <laughs> but if you just sat here and watched the day's colors change outside, you'd watch ravens landing in those trees. You'd see squirrels running up down the banister. At night, Zach, I have three what are called roof rats. Uh -huh. They're little tiny rats that look like mice with these really long tails. And they come down and they chase each other across the banister. Yeah. So I, and I love rodents. So I'm you're a, not going to kill them? No, man. I love rodents. Okay. I've even had rats in the house. Unfortunately, I had Gross. to trap those. Big, I had wharf rats in That's the house disgusting. here, but they're gone. Okay. So the tree rats are about that big with long tails, and they're really cute. They go squeak, 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 squeak. They chase each other up and down the banister, and they even don't mind it if I go out there and I sit. Like, they'll walk over and start eating the seeds. And to me, it's really cool to be visited by animals like that. If we open this door here, within minutes or a few minutes, the squirrels would come right in looking for food. I really? just, minutes ago, had a bird in the house. Really? The birds come in here, and they kind of know me. I have a junka. I have a, a, a wren tit. I have a oak tit mouse. I know all the bird names because I study them. I have a little red-breasted sparrow out here, and they all, the same ones all come every day. I get a cooper's hawk that lands out here in the afternoon looking to catch a bird to eat. So I get a whole sort of a... If you look at that one painting there on the wall, that's kind of like... This is kind of a depiction. Show them. This is kind of a depiction of my world. Wow. The horse that got lost Show in them. the midst. This is Show kind them of, up close. This is kind of a depiction of... Uh, the, the room, the life, the thought process, landscape. If you look at that, you see a horse, you see people, you see fields, you see vineyards, you see sun, you see moon. I mean, I try to, I try this to put, just, whew, I so try to intense. put everything into into the painting. Um, like what is we it chalk. No, that's actually Pass very out? good question. Um, I use deco color pens that are my key to my success, and I'll, I'll, I don't like to give away my trade secrets, but. I use these deco color pens, which mm -hmm. is actually like enamel paint. Okay. It's only made in Japan. Very hard to find these. They're you can expensive. get these at Blick. These are about five dollars a piece. Jeez. But if you paint thickly with this, it comes out like oil paint. Yeah. Um, and then what I do is I highlight it with I highlight it with a little whiteout. Mm. So industrial whiteout that's used for corrections. These are all my trade secrets. Okay. So I hope get you don't have a too big of an audience. But. Oh. Um, the, I'm going to steal it. The whiteout, um, I mean, it's, you know, all is fair in love and war and art. You know, you can, every, nothing is original. Everything is derivative. Everybody looks at this and goes, oh, wow, you studied Basquiat, didn't you? Or you like Picasso, didn't you? And you like Paul Clay, didn't you? Well, yeah, I mean, those are the great, it's like, if you play guitar, which I do, the it so, psychedelic sounds artist. like Led Zeppelin. Well, yeah, I mean, everybody listened to Led Zeppelin and... You know? you know, everyone can just compare, like, we just need to stop comparing because I, you're yeah. you. And you look at this cool. Show them this cool one on the uh, on the garbage. Which one? I love things. Don't you love things that are ran over like oh, okay. cans? Oh, okay. So, okay, this is part of my doing the best I can series. Yeah, here, show them uh, close again. This is these are crushed cans. I <laughs> love crushed things, metal. Many people see these in the street flat. Dude, I'll stop on the PCH park and run out in the street, and if I see the right one, yeah. And I've, I've sold these at auction. I've sold these for charities. I give them away. They're um, super cool. I frame these, and this is part of my Doing the Best I Can series. Here we have a crushed object that once served a cold pop soda pop drink that was then discarded. And I and all I, you did was put two lines on it. I brought him back to life. And so he's doing the best that he can. And by me finding objects like this and bringing them back to life, re, it's called repurposing. Yeah, I've been waiting um, to this lately. So, so you know what I'm saying. Look how cool this print is. It's, it's totally, cool I mean, I love that. So when you look around the room here, you see, um, and I've actually, since I'm moving in four months and living in some fear that what am I going to do with all this art, um, I've actually thinned out the collection some. This used to be even more overwhelmingly crowded <laughs> yeah. in with stuff. So what happens when like a girl comes over to your house? Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> um, either, I've had people literally walk in that door, their yeah. friends or guests, Yeah. you know, and they go, they look around and they go, are you okay? I go, uh, like... you mean like right this second? They go, yeah, it looks like you got like a problem or you're like mentally ill or no, something. No, no, no. You know, to other people, this, your house almost looks like um, 
that one movie where the guy's in the shed and he's putting up all the newspapers on the Oh, wall. yeah, that's A Beautiful Mind. A Beautiful with, Mind, uh, yeah. yeah. by, by about which, which Russell Crowe was in, which is the story of um, John Nash, who was a brilliant guy that worked at Rand Corporation that innovated game theory, which was a theory of when he had all the things like a dog watching a fly in a room. Yeah. You know, a dog's watching the trapezoid that the flood. The dog has another purpose in that. You know, dogs are a lot smarter than we know. The dog's trying to, like, figure out the universe by looking at that fly. You know, you've seen a dog like sitting... figuring out a pattern or something. You know, he's looking at that fly, and it's just like, wow, it's one of those puzzles of life. And um, forget about that. So everything... Nothing is random. Everything fits to... Oh, sorry. Nothing is random. Everything fits together. Um, nothing is unrelated. The smallest dust moat, the most... You know, random squirrel running by, a song that you might write, a capo for a guitar. All these things all fit into the general pattern of creating art. Everything, as you would know as a yoga guy um, or yoga person, is breath. I don't breathe very well. I tend to hold my breath. I tend to slump over. I have to really remind myself, come on, man, sit up. Pull the chest through. Pull the chest through. Like, you know, somebody taught me this one thing. My friend Darren, you might know him, who's a... I don't know what he does. He's kind of like a, he does tea ceremonies and he's a, I met him hiking on a random trail and we became friends. He said that you can open your, your body up by going like this, open your back up and then going like that and opening your front up. You go like that and open your, if you have a tight back, and these are good tips for oh, people good. that want to open, the, you go like this to open your chest up, which t- tends to get closed in. Again, I'm like clearly no expert. Um, but so all this stuff, like I like to think that you could just pick up like a random, um, a random thing. Like here's this new song that my partner Regis and I are working on. Um, I, fortunately, you know. Are you do, play it for us? I do music. Um, I could I could play it. Play it for us. I don't know if I can play. This is a brand brand new song. I try. can try to play some. It's a brand new song. Um, this is one of the most beautiful guitars in the world, by the way. This is called the Froggy Bottom. This guy only makes a hundred of these a year. He used to make it. Do you know guitars at all? I don't. I can't play music. I'm only a um, uh, drawer. I'll try to play some of this. This is a new song. Um, I hope Regis doesn't mind me playing this, but. Um Riding high with all my pride. Thought that I could live without your love. Didn't know how wrong I was Till you told me goodbye Whenever I walk the streets alone I'm thinking about you now The things that you told me all along How could I doubt you now? It goes like that. I like it. Um, and this guitar is one of the great instruments I've ever owned of all the guitars. It's really... Um, Beatles. It just sounds so good. Bless these people. I don't want to take up the whole podcast with music stuff because it gets obsessive, but... So the songs, the rocks, the art, the squirrels, somehow for me as an artist, I want to think that it all fits together and it all matters and it all has a value of a statement of worth, of like, a, like they say in French, a raison d'être, a reason to be, like a purpose. And for me, having been an addict and an alcoholic, and those of anyone watching that's got troubles with alcohol or drugs or any other uh, substance abuse, uh, my heart goes out to you. I hope that you'll seek help and go to AA meetings or... Overeaters Anonymous or whatever it is, Al-Anon, CODA, uh, Cocaine Anonymous. I've been to all those meetings. I've been asked to speak at those meetings as to how did you do it. And I was like almost dead. I was really doing a lot of drugs, really, as you see, drinking a lot of wine. Um, I had access to wine. I'm considered a wine expert. I've studied wine my whole life. And I don't drink wine. I sell wine. I know about wine. I respect wine. I love the fruit. You don't get high in your own supply. I don't get high in my own supply. No, I sell it. I fortunately am doing business today with Bristol Farms. They buy a lot of wine for me, and um, they like my labels. And um, so I try to really 
have some inner quiet. It may not seem like that. It may seem like, God, that guy's like drinking too much coffee. I'm actually 26 months off coffee. Wow. I only drink green tea. I only drink tea, black mm-hmm. tea or green tea. Mm-hmm. I drink a lot what of it. What about pu'er? I don't, pu'er is good. Those little balls you put in that yeah. are beautiful and they're very, very fragrant. Um, I don't drink that as much. I tend to drink this kind of uh, Taiwanese um, oolong from the Ali San Mountains of if you've been, have you been to Taiwan ever? No, not yet. It's a beautiful, like, 200-mile-long island. It's part of China, or was. Now it's its own country. And they have six to 8,000-foot mountains that have tea gardens or tea estates with 200-year-old plants, like grapevines that grow beautiful leaves. And the, the Chinese tea, the, the, the tea from, um, from Taiwan, for me, is the most delicious. It's very much like wine. It has... It has a beautiful, luminescent, golden green jade color. It's got an incredible aroma of, of crushed mint and flowers and lavender and sage. Like when you're hiking the Malibu Mountains or nearby Topanga Calabasas, right now at this time of year, you can smell the rich sage. You can smell the ceanothus. You can smell the, the dry brush that has if it hasn't burned in these awful fires. So these teas for me have the same kind of intense, fragrant lusciousness of a wine. I'm also a foodie. I'm in the food and restaurant business, you know, supplying restaurants with, with wines, and I help with wine lists and stuff. Um, How many hours a week do you paint? Oh, I, I paint whenever, you know, it strikes me, which is another good question. Um, I do these kind of like random sketches. Uh-huh. I got into it with somebody the other day and had an argument, and this was like how a painting begins. Is this is. Or something? I was upset, and like I told you, Zach, I try to be conflict adverse in my life. I don't want to explode at people in traffic. In the last week or two, I've been flipped off in traffic several times. For no, I don't think I did anything wrong. Somebody just did that LA thing, you know? Fuck you! you. Right. And I'm like, you're like, no, I'm just <clears throat> I didn't do that, but I just, I tried not to do anything, but I paint about it. Personally, I don't think you're very nice. This was about a dear friend that was yelling at me about something and hung up on me. Mm. Uh, and so this gets painted in to this. Uh, my friend Alexis Zabe, who I mentioned to you, is a really cool guy who's a, a Mexican cinematographer. I was having breakfast with him at Rose Cafe and his beautiful wife, Katharina, and their baby, Cosmo. And I started sketching him on a little card. I just use whatever's at hand, books, oh. lyrics. And so... Alexis, who's a cinematographer, kind of looks like this. He kind of looks like Jesus, maybe kind of like you. Huh. So he has a beard and he has long hair. He's a great looking, interesting guy. So I did this thing with him with a menu in the back. And I had this idea this morning, Alexis El Visionario, the visionary, because he's a cinematographer. He recently did a movie called The Florida Project, which was a really amazing movie about uh, underprivileged families living in this big apartment building in Florida and how the kids got by in their own little world. and. This guy's like, a, and I'm going to present this to him at dinner tomorrow night, mm. uh, along with the CBD that you tried and uh, some wine that I'm bringing in. What do people think about the art when you give it to them? You know, some people are really stoked when I give them art because, like you, I notice you give your paintings away. Yeah. What I do, Zach, is I carry around my little wallet or portfolio. Uh huh. All the time. Well, I carry this around uh, all day long. If yeah. I go out into the world, like breakfast, and I'm going to go to Malibu later, and it has a lot of these little paintings. Hearts buzzed on strongly caffeinated tea uh-huh. with one ghost. See Casper's in there, the little blue ghost. And here's one I did on a lottery ticket. This is a lottery scratcher I found in like the driveway of a, of a, of a you know, like a um, gas station. And it's 19 chances to win her, but would you want to? You know, difficult girlfriend, whatever. I'm a difficult guy too, but these are all things I carry around. And if I like somebody, and we have a like, you know, I meet somebody I think is cool. I just, like I just gave you that painting. Yeah, that's what I do too. You know, I give them away because I really feel like, and I have a gallery that represents me, BG Gallery. If anybody from BG is watching, thank you for selling my work. Um, I have a gallery. Where's that? I, it's in Bergamot Station. Where's that? Uh, Bergamot's over on Olympic and 26th Street by Cloverfield. It's a, you know, Bergamot's got all the galleries. Okay, I'm not familiar. Um, so they represent me and he has some of my stuff, but... Art for me shouldn't live in private, sequestered like in museums. It should be out in public. Totally. It should be like the painted rocks I'll leave around places. Who People... is to say who deserves to be in the museum and who doesn't deserve to be in the museum? Exactly. It's so subjective. And like that's why I love putting my art on the street. It's like if I go put a huge piece on the street and I'm not attached to it, then every single person on La Cienega, thousands of people are going to see it that day. Rather than a museum. Yeah. And if you leave them around, 
they're like, God, a painting is out in the street. Whose is this? I'll get calls. Dude, I just found one of your paintings. You dropped me. And I left it there. You mean I can have it? I go, yeah. well, yeah. And, you know, Take sure. It. It's my honor. It'd be my honor. I keep kind of wishing. Gee, I wish somebody would break into my house, which I never lock the door. <laughs> I wish somebody would like break in here and like steal a painting. You know, like that would make me feel important. Like they care enough to steal right, it. Right. Like it's worth millions. Well, I don't want them stealing guitars, but most of the guitars are pretty old and beat up. They're, most of what I own is a beater, beater surfboards. Old t-shirts. You're just chill. You don't care that much. I mean, I, I want to care, but possessions to me have, possessions have kind of not ruined my life, but made me feel obsessive. Like the new car thing and the, you know, having to have something groovy or like be famous or recognized. I'd rather almost be totally anonymous mm -hmm. than be somebody that's craving fame. It's nice to be recognized for your talent and acknowledged as, you know, it'd be nice to be like W.B. Yeats, who was one of the most famous poets somebody gave me this book and goes dude you need to read about this poet you know Yeats was one of the most famous poets um in the last century and into early part of this century I think um I haven't read that yet it's if you want to take it you can um I just have so much material in life both mental and stuff sitting around guitars artwork things to do hikes meals friends coming over I have breakfast every morning at the Rose Cafe um which is really fun. Every single day for the last three years, I've gone to the Rose Cafe. And I have like a whole court there. Friends join me for breakfast. I come up with sketch ideas down there. So um, you're really social. Well, I'm kind of a recluse. And I kind of, um, I would never think to do anything like this normally. Mm -hmm. You know, I, this is like really a privilege to, to have anybody go, hey, this, your stuff's really cool. I want to show it to my, my little audience or whatever. But um, I kind of keep to myself. I've learned to be... Um, so much like self, not so much self-sufficient as I like to say I'm alone, but not lonely. Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time alone, but I'm never lonely. Right. Because if I walk in here from being out making sales calls, hiking to Panga or Malibu Canyon or Point Doom, Canaan Road, wherever I go hiking, I come home and all of a sudden it's like, oh, wow, great. Now I can work on this. I can like go back into any of these paintings, you know, and like... You know, flowers, damn it. Look at that. That's just, to me, that's really cool. Like, what was I thinking when I painted that? Flowers, damn it. Right? Here's a, here's like a... I like how messy you are. Four or three people who could be masks with strange something and with, sta with strange trees and even stranger clouds. Like, that's, to me, that if I saw that in a gallery for 40 bucks, I'd go, gee, that's really cool. I'm going to frame that. I'd paint paintings that I would like to have myself. I only paint you know? what I want to do. I don't care what anyone else thinks about it. I, I just paint whatever I need to make because it needs to come out of me. Yeah. You know, I was listening to this show the other day, and there's this artist, Neckface, and he, he was said when he was in art school in New York City, he would just be making art all the time, and, and the kids, he would be like already done with his assignments, and then he would be working in the studio on his own shit, and then the kids in the school would be like, what, what assignment is this for? Yeah. And he'd be like, I'm just making it. Yeah. Like people, if you're going to art school and you're not working on stuff because it's not an assignment, you suck. Yeah. It's, it's not about the assignment. It's because you have to do these things or your soul is not going to be okay. Let me get you some more tea. Keep talking. Um, do you, do you yeah. know what I mean? I mean, creativity is, is, is spontaneous. Creativity is God-given. Creativity is of the moment. It shouldn't be something where you sit down and go, I'm going to be creative. Right. Like I'm going to set this time aside for 45 minutes. Well, you can do that if you want. I mean, it makes sense to be, um, it makes sense to be, I like to be disciplined. I like to have time when I come home and paint or like I'm going to go meet some bros and go surfing. Mm -hmm. um, I write my songs. Like I'll play you one more song I wrote. Um, okay. If I can. Yeah, play it. My songs try to have a message and unfortunately or whatever, I'm trying to be commercial and get them out to publishers, but. Um, play it. I gotta remember the lyrics. Hold on. That's the problem with writing songs is you forget the lyrics. Um, I love the bunny pound. If the stars in our eyes are alright, maybe it's love. Maybe it's love. And if these arms can hold you through the night, maybe it's love. Maybe it's love. Maybe it's love. Maybe 
It's love you're scared but you're sticking around just because Maybe it's love, maybe it's love Love like heaven feels when it's real Maybe it's love, maybe it's love You don't have to know all you need is to feel Maybe it's love, maybe it's love Maybe it's love, maybe it's love You're scared but you're sticking around just because Maybe it's love, maybe it's love You've waited for this moment all of your life And something's telling you this time it's right Close your eyes, let the dreams come alive Maybe it's love, maybe it's love Believe in faith and your fears will all die Maybe it's love, maybe it's love Maybe it's love, maybe it's love You're scared but you're sticking around just because Maybe it's love, maybe it's love That one's called Maybe It's Love. I like it. Maybe it's insecurity, though, that they're sticking around. And that would be me. <laughs> I mean, I've stuck around in most relationships because I'm afraid of losing what I don't have. I'm afraid of, you know, loss. You know, afraid of fear is just like false evidence appearing real, which I learned in AA. You know, if I'm in fear about anything, if I'm in fear about the future, I'm in what if. And what if is never good because you don't know what's going to happen. We, we don't know what's going to happen in five minutes. Maybe God knocks on the door. Maybe a squirrel starts speaking English. You don't know. It's it's not probable, but it's possible. They listen to me a lot. I play my guitar out on the deck, and like one will come and sit and like drape its arms down and get all like buttery eyed and like listen to my music. And she's it's a little female, and she just sits there listening. She's got almonds in front of her, and she listens to me play music. And then she sees something, and she runs off. But she gives me some of her time. So wow. that's a trip when that happens. I mean, I get like. I get like tears in my eyes when the squirrels, like it's a little rodent and it's really cute. And a couple let me pet them and they look at me and I can tell when I'm okay if they're blinking. If they're like this, and their ears are back, you got to back off because I've been bit by the little guys. Really? Yeah, they, they're, they're, they're in fear. They think you're, look how big we are. We're like yeah. Godzilla to them. Right. Imagine being a bird and seeing these humans, these giant creatures like thundering around and shooting guns and... You know, to be trusted by... That's why people like dogs so much. Because they're nice. They're just cool. They're four-legged, furry little creatures. They run in. They hop up on the couch. I don't have a dog. Because I keep thinking of... A, I used to have a squirrel that Zach would come in here when I'd be working. And it would sit on this couch and, and eat almonds and, and, and watch me work. And I'd turn around and talk to it. And it'd just be sitting here. And then it would like run out. Like they kind of trust me. Like they look at me and I think they see an okay person. Mm. Animals well, they are. They can feel it. That's not like, they're really smart. They can see your aura, I guess. Yeah, birds come right in here and they look at me. I have a little junka, which are those little, those little birds that have like black hoods with a little black beak and a white body. It's called a junka, and they just they look at me and I can walk on the deck and they don't fly away. The doves all fly away. See, here comes one now. That is, I don't know which one that is, but he he knows I'm in here. They have really good vision. Look at the, see how they do that little beak thing against the, they just like sharpen their beaks and they're just so cool. I mean, I, I learned from them and I, I paint them, yeah, you know, cool. they're and, sort of, um, they're a muse for you. you can see up here on the wall, there's a, a bark bird. Oh, I love that. See, that's, that's a bark cool. bird. And I like to find fr uh, fallen bark and paint it into stuff. And I love how everything's push pins. That's exactly how I work. Have you been uh, to Bali ever? I haven't been to Bali. You gotta Bali. go to Bali. A guy like you, it's a yoga island. Yeah. It's Hindus. They're all very Om Swasti Astu, Om Shanti Shanti Om. They're super mellow people. They have nothing, like very few possessions, but they all have that non LA stoke. Like everybody in LA is like tense and yeah. angry. Like me, I can be that way. Oh, yeah. Where's mine? Get I off my wave. That. You know? Well, dude, it was the weirdest thing today. So I'm supposed to go teach uh, yoga at LA Fitness at Playa Vista at 9 uh -huh. 45 a.m. Right? Oh, wow. And I left my house at 5.30 in the morning in Thousand Oaks 
to get to take yoga at the Yangar Institute, like this great center, right? And then cruise over to Playa Vista. I'm like, oh, it'd be a great morning. I get to Playa Vista, and there's already a teacher in the room. Oh no! And I'm like, what the heck? Like on my thing, like on my app, it's like Zach Wagner substituting for blah blah blah. Yeah. And I'm like, look, girl, I'm like look, it's my class right now. And then she's like, it's on teaching. I'm like, what the heck? So I just left, and I'm like trying to call the managers, like, hey, I need to get paid. Yeah. Like, I drove like 50 miles. So like. So what happened? I'm still waiting for them to call me back. Well, you handled it well, being flexible. Yeah. For me, being total, like, I've been pursuing um, a philosophy or religion of total freedom in the last... You're like stoic. Well, being, you know, first of all, I've been successful thanks to God and sobriety in my, in my business career. I have done pretty well. Uh, second of all, my family took care of me. We've been um, homeowners and property owners in Malibu since... Almost 100 years. Mm, wow. We were one of the first families to move to Malibu in the 20s oh, wow. when May Ringe opened it up when she lost her battle with the state. You probably know about that know story. That, yeah. and my grandpa bought one of the first lots in the colony where we then grew up and then we moved to Point Doom. So I'm kind of an old local. But I was had a drug and alcohol problem and fortunately my family had me intervened. I went to rehab, which was then called Exodus. You? I was 41. Okay. And my... Um, my, my rehab guy is Dallas Taylor, who was a, a rock drummer. He knocked on my door at the Mondrian Hotel um, December 1, 1997 at 6 in the morning, Sunday morning. That guy came to my hotel, and Dallas uh, said I had drunk 10 bottles of wine myself and was calling people saying I'm going to jump out the window and really? trying to get Led Zeppelin on the phone and the whole crazy. And he goes, are you having any fun anymore? And I went, no, I'm pretty Why miserable. Why were you so sad? Crazy, dramatic, you know, broke up with my girlfriend in the hall, drinking wine. I had eight people staying in different suites, paying for everything. Limousine How'd downstairs. You have all this money? I just have done well in business. Okay. You know, and it was, well, I did well in business, not that well, but I was also borrowed out on credit cards. Jesus. So I had, you were balling. I had owned a house up in the hills. My wife and I got divorced. Bless her soul. How I hope she you, gets. How long were you married? Married for 10 years, uh-huh. from age 28 to age 38. Um, got divorced. Um, lived down here in these. In these old buildings up here, when I was drinking and crazy, I was managing a rock band, um, climbing the tree in the morning, you know, two in the morning, bottles were breaking, people were complaining, police were showing up. It was really dramatic and terrible. A girlfriend came over that was mad at me for something, grabbed one of my Martins out of its case, smashed it against the wall, threw bottles through the window. I mean, it was ugly. So later on, I got DUIs and, and I, I got sober. My family said, this isn't working out, dude. Right. And I got sober. And so all this art and all the music... And the goodness, and I have 37 books of poetry on Amazon that I've published, wow. and you know, actual published poet for many years. So you're an author. Um, I'm an author. Uh, I don't have any books to show you because I've given them all away. So you but, didn't paint before your sobriety? Um, I have a whole box of paintings I did when I was drunk, and they um, I don't even want to show them to you. They're terrible. Okay. I mean, I can't see which end is up. Um, the last thing I did drunk ever was this poem. I think I have it. I was in a, a room at the Mondrian Hotel, and I was super drunk. And I um, had like two suites of rooms, nude massages going on around the clock, room service bringing, it was like in a rock band. And I wrote this poem called Upside Down. This was the last thing I ever did drunk. I did this like hours before I got intervened. 11, 29, 97. I'm not sure I can, but I'll try. Upside Down. I'm upside down in an empty wine glass of my own making. Keys lost, sunglasses, for no sun, too. But help me, I'm only trying to dance at some self-invented carnival ball. Pouring over, pathetic chance. Yes, I've lost her, too, my muse. And gave her everything from a song. I tried too hard and too little to write, but I'm still playing it anyway. Anyway. Where will you be when I wake up in the morning? Certainly not with me. In times like these, I wouldn't want to wake up with me either. See ya. So, so this you was are over yourself. And see, it's this Mondrian, dude. Look, I'm not making this stuff up. This yeah. is Mondrian stationery. I'm still. I mean, before then, I'd publish pumps. That's not great writing, but it's honest. That was my last thing I did drunk, and I keep this around. Like, oh, dude. I'm still trying to write. The see you part's kind of alarming because I had the window open at the hotel. It was like three, so it's almost four. Almost like a death letter. I mean, this is like I'm out of here, bro. Suicide note, almost. You know, I was trying to write a song. I was trying to like come to terms with all this creativity and all this self doubt and all this worry and all this compare and despair and all the things that we learn in rehab. You don't need to do that. You don't need to compare yourself. So mm-hmm. what if she broke up with you? You know, yeah, you deserved it. Take yeah. your role. Take your part in the role. You know. I feel and, like everyone should work on themselves a lot, so I don't I don't get 
Like when people say, oh, I got broken up. Like, Here's I'm another like, gift. I'm like, go work on yourself. Go do some yoga. Well, you can, you know, and that's a good point is if I'm in a spin over here, oh, wow, you know, it's like Tuesday. It's like 11 o'clock. What am I going to go hike? I'll go up to Canyon. I'll go to the power poles and hike up to the overlook. I call it the um, Zuma overlook. Look down at Zuma Canyon. Try to get still. Try to smell the... The breeze, maybe a bird flies by. Or I love it when the, the turkey vultures, you know, those big black mm. birds, when they start flying over and I, I go, caw, 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 and they all start coming around. They're looking down at me. They kind of know me a little bit because I'm always on this ridge. Maybe they don't and I pretend they do. Yeah. But I'm up on this ridge and I see like one flying and I go, caw, 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 because they do that. And then one circles and other circles. And the other day I had like 10 of them circling me and like swooping in and like looking at me like is one of our own in trouble or something it was like they were showing the human curiosity and compassion they were coming in like 30 40 feet above me i could see that red gullet that they have the vultures and they're kind of looking down like is that guy dead can we go pick his bones or is he okay and they were curious they were wow. curious beings and every time i go up that one hike i do i'm always hiking canyon or zuma canyon Right in that area is very mm -hmm. spiritual to me because I, I look down on Point Doom. I can see my surf break. I can see Big Doom. I can see Zuma. And I've had a lot of very meaningful moments up on that hill, like great moments of clarity, stillness, epiphanies where I, you just kind of go, wow, everything's like so good and nothing's happening other than just being. You know, like you smell the dirt and you see the burned sticks, you know, and you just go, wow, there was a fire, but it's growing back. And just all those gratitude things that you get in life when you're in yoga or you're a serious surfer or you're even like a nurse at a hospital or maybe you're making pancakes and you're grateful to be a chef or maybe you're just walking down the street and somebody smiles where you're kind of like fully in the moment. I'm guilty for not being in the moment. Oh, like I don't all the time. I'm thinking about, oh, Zach went to the, to the yoga thing and some other chick was teaching and so he didn't get his gig and now he's here and we're filming this and will anybody see it or does it matter? The, the overthinking mind is always trying to throw up these. Well, know. that's the thing. That's what you. That's really interesting. You bring that up because when I ask a lot of people to go on the podcast, a lot of I don't get a lot of. It just says seen, you know, because I think a lot of people are afraid of their own voice, or they don't like their own voice, or they don't like to be on camera, or they think that they're not important enough. But it's just us hanging out and having a good time, and, yeah, and talking and learning about your your process and how you work and. I find it really interesting and I can learn something from every single person I interview and it's not about views or likes for me. It's just because yeah. I want to do this because I have to now. Well, it's spontaneous. You're a likable person. I've been in sales my whole life for 40 years going out like making the calls out in public giving lectures about wine at restaurants with like 30 and 40 people bigger meetings, speaking at AA meetings to rooms of like 100, 150 people. I've learned how to deal with the humanity that used to frighten me, which is I'm scared of people. Like, Because mm -hmm. if you're scared of people, you're scared of your own self. Because we have all the people in the world in us. We have saints, God, murderers, artists, poets, nurses. Everything exists within us. So if I'm fearing a podcast, because this morning I would have immediately come back from the rose, tidied up, maybe tried to do a wine deal, and then gone surfing. Mm -hmm. Just routine. Right. You know? Me too. But, you know, you're a cool guy. I follow you on Instagram. I like what you're about. I love your yoga moves. You have some beautiful people that you interview. Your art is really good. The Buddhist Thank stuff, you. the auras. I relate to what you're doing. Like, I have community with you because I respect the fact that you are not only taking care of your body, doing art, a very clear person that communicates well. You're somebody that's you know, a force to be reckoned with. Like you've done good work on your life. And so when you said, do you want to be on my podcast? My initial thought was, oh, I, oh, there's a squirrel. Check it out. See him out there? Mm, oh, he's big. That's a big one. He's big. Um, my initial thought, Zach, was, you know, um, the initial gut response is, well, wait, you know, well, what's in it for me? Right. You know, what am I going to get? Am I going to get some money? Am I going to meet some chicks? Am I going to, maybe if somebody wants to buy some art, like the selfish, mercantilistic, right. greedy, maybe he knows some publishers, I can sell my music. And I, no, man, great. Thanks a lot for the thought. Just try to invite a friend into your house, make some tea, share some gifts, you know, and see what you have to offer and what your point of view in the world is. And I had promised you that a squirrel would show up, and there's one right now. And you got a Rebel Buddha sticker and yeah, a Rebel man. Buddha no, I'm air stoked. freshener for your car. Oh, I did? I got yeah, one of those? One of oh, those. bitchin'. Well, there you go. Yeah, I got a new Honda, so I'll go spray <laughs> in there. But that's, uh, I think that's Spilky. Spilky's my female that likes me to feed her. They're really big. Squirrel. Spilky! Spilky! Hi, Spilk! That is Spilky. 
See, she's eating sunflower seeds, though. She doesn't like being disturbed when she's eating sunflower. <laughs> they do not like being disturbed when they're eating. She's like, the ears go back a little. Is she over there? Or just the door for the sandwich. Oh, I'm sorry. Generally. Spilky. Where are you going to go serve? Doom, man. Oh, yeah? Probably, yeah. Can I come with you? Yeah, if you want. Should we go over there? Well, i got to make one phone call. Um, what car are you in? Because i got to do a... I gotta... I got to be back in Agora by 4 for a yoga lesson. So I was going to drive down over there. You yeah. Can't, you can't drive two cars over there, huh? No, I, I can, but i got a friend showing up already, and okay. I can't bring more than two cars down oh, in no the worries. lot. I'll just, I'll just go to zeros or something. i got an idea. Do you know where Gray Fox is? On the point, I could let you in at the Gray Fox Gate. Maybe. Because I already have one guest coming. Okay. And I can't really bring two, right, but for um, sure. no worries. Let me. Um, are, are we? Are you gonna? Are you done? Or how does this work? I mean, do you want to share anything else with our audience? Um, you want to tell uh, one more final thing, closing thoughts, or anything? No, I just am grateful to have been on Zach's show. I think his yoga work is exceptional, and the art is good, and a very expressive human being. And I hope people see something that they like and that they've connected to. If anybody really responded to anything, they're welcome to reach out through Zach. And if they see something that they want, I'm happy to give away a painting. And what's your Instagram? Alden underscore Marin. A-L-D-E-N underscore Marin. M-A-R-I-N. I'll leave it in the, yeah. in the thing. Yeah. And if anybody Bye. wants anything for charities, school events, charitable causes, uh, contributions for fire victims, I'm always happy to donate paintings, even big frame ones. You can see I have some big frame mm -hmm. ones around here. I'm happy uh, Khalil at Sun Life, whom I'm a big believer in Khalil and and um, and and all the staff at Sun Life, and they do a great job. They you have should my get him on the show. You really should. Mm -hmm. They have my art at every single Sun Life, and he gives it away for the tip jar. Well, he sells it for the tip jar. Technically twenty, but if you want to give ten or five, you can have a painting too, just as long as you leave something for the kids mm -hmm. that are making the shakes. That's so cool of you. So yeah, I mean, I'm not selling my Almarazes because those are my favorite, but um, I, um, you know, everything else is. Is, is available um, for a cause for free, or if people want to buy it, they can. They can give the money to a charity, um, whatever. Um, I'm happy to contribute and really grateful to have been on the show. Thank you, my brother. You. Yeah, good man. In. Yeah, good man. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah, thanks for watching, sure. guys. Namaste. Namaste. Thanks for watching the Rebel Buddha Show.